Beauty Box is a curated box of the latest in the world of beauty. Beauty Box concept, I think, started in late um, September um, 2010 with Birch Box. So I think basically it started as a sampling service where people could, you know, sample sort of the latest and greatest skincare and makeup uh, products that were available. So without, you know, uh, uh, the comfort of your own um, homes. Beauty Box is a great option for a beauty enthusiast who doesn't have time to skim through the malls amidst the pandemic and it's also value for money. Today we're talking about beauty boxes and I have with me Vasudha Rai who is a big fan of beauty boxes. Vasudha, why is it that you love a beauty box? What makes it so special? Well, first of all, it's like receiving a gift every month. Then second of all, it's you know, uh, discovering new brands because, you know, I wouldn't uh, buy these products myself, you know, especially from the really niche brands. And thirdly, I mean, because I'm a journalist, a beauty journalist, it helps me do my research, keep in touch with the newer, younger brands. So, uh, for all of you, you can see this table. Vasudha has carried her wellness box and her beauty box for us. Uh, I know it's a personal question, Vasudha, but tell us what is your budget for subscription boxes on a monthly basis and what is it that you get? So, uh, between 150 to 200 dollars. Um, sometimes I get like a beautiful barrier repairing cream and a vitamin C serum and a body and a, and a body oil, which is what I got in December. And then sometimes it's not just beauty; it's also wellness. So sometimes, uh, and, the, and the wellness box that I use is curated by me. So in winter, I will order things like omega-3 and collagen. In summer, I will go for things which have beta-carotene for sun protection and vitamin C. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like a personal life. It's like having a personal shopper, basically. America-based Boxwala's April subscription is valued at 257 US dollars but costs a subscriber only 50 US dollars. Boxfala started in 2015 and hit profitability in 2016. When we started Boxfala, we wanted uh, Boxfala to be a platform where we could showcase uh, the best artists and artisans across different categories, including beauty. Um, uh, literature, film, uh, music, ethical fashion. The beauty box started being really popular is because you can essentially um, um, test these products from the comfort on, of your home. So we've come up uh, with a structure so we act, can actually pay how much ever we can within uh, the budget to the artisans we showcase. And so for, it, it works both ways because for us, we want to showcase the best products that we find for the brands they want to reach the right customers, so for them it's also part of their marketing. In India, there's a company called Sugar Box. It's a lifestyle box that started in 2014 and hit profitability in just two months. The founder thinks the revenue is going to grow for her by 100% per annum. Women, we love everything from fashion to jewellery to beauty. So I didn't want to, you know, uh, narrow myself into just one category. And uh, that's the reason behind why I chose um, everything under the sun. I, so a typical box would basically contain a jewellery item, a clothing item, a pair of flip-flops maybe, a nice quirky mug. So that's the, that's the idea behind it, that it's not just beauty, it's not just one particular category as fashion or jewellery, it's everything under the blue that a girl would enjoy. I started this uh, six years back and honestly the first one year we were, we started being profitable since uh, in the first two months itself, you know, and we had uh, collaborated with a designer called Nishka Lulla. So surprisingly the box that became the most popular was a unicorn edition. So, you know, you wouldn't associate, uh, unicorn sounds very cute and young and very shimmering and magical. So I didn't honestly expect it to be loved so much, but uh, that was our most hit box. People went berserk over it. Komal is a former magazine beauty editor. 
he started a beauty box in 2012 but soon turned the business into a production company to create digital content. She thinks the luxury beauty market is not big enough and her beauty philosophy is less is more. I started Joss Box in 2012 with the idea that it would be a beauty subscription box but a luxury beauty subscription box. And, you know, there was there were mixed reactions simply because it was such a new concept and I really think that, especially in 2012, I mean, Nika had just about, it was launching at about the same time and the whole idea of e-commerce for beauty was really new. One of the ideas that I had was, you know, any website, because I came from an editorial background, I was of the opinion that any sort of e-commerce website that I launched would also need to have a content arm as well. Just talking about the products that we would be getting, talking about beauty in general, educating people about how to use beauty products, especially when it comes to skincare. And what ended up happening is that the content aspect of it really took off and Jossbox just became an editorial site. At the end of 2014 to 2020, we were just a full-fledged production house. What does a beauty box need to have to be successful in India? I think in India we are very into Ayurved. So an Ayurved based wellness box would be really nice. So in summer I could do with some sort of like cooling herbs or like in winter I could do some sort of anti-pollution herbs. So something which is according to the season, something which is according to the city, you know, you have to have deep knowledge of like what's happening in every city and then accordingly curate the boxes. Then secondly, something which is aspirational because beauty boxes you know they satisfy both ends of the customer the beginner the one who's just starting with their skincare routine and the very advanced customer also. Do you think um, Indians uh, are price sensitive and do not go for a high-end luxury box? See uh, Indians are buying high-end beauty products I just uh, wrote a story for Mint Lounge wherein I spoke to loads of Indians all over the country and then people are buying like beauty products, luxury beauty products were 30,000 in places like Dimapur. So there is obviously that market and then you have something like a beauty box, a high-end beauty box which is offering you a bunch of luxury products which is like maybe 40% uh, lesser, why wouldn't people go for it? But uh, what, is, what according to you is the reason for a lot of beauty boxes, high-end beauty boxes that started and had to shut down in India? I think they all started during a time which was I think between 2012 to about 2014 that's the time they started and that time first of all this whole culture of, of subscription wasn't there not just in India but in the whole world. Secondly uh, magazines and print they were the primary uh, places where people would like put out information right bloggers and influencers weren't really trusted in India at that time so the way something can go viral now like for instance you take the example of like Boxwala, right? I mean, they contacted me way back in 2016. From then, from, from then to now, they've grown like exponentially. So Vasudha, do you have any statistics to uh, prove your optimism? So one, one statistic that really stuck out uh, is by Gartner, which is one of the world's leading research agencies. And it went something on the lines of that by 2023, all companies selling directly to the customers um, 75% of them will do subscription boxes. Thank you so much, Vasudha. Clearly, a beauty box is about self-indulgence. And our next story is about massages. Wow. I love massages. Now, who doesn't? <laughs>